From the very precipice of the spring equinox, welcome to Smoky Goodness 2.0. Today featuring um, my interpretation of a great spaghetti sauce. Chef John Polite over at It's Just Food right here on YouTube issued a challenge about a week ago, maybe not quite a week ago. Uh, make a good spaghetti sauce. This is my interpretation of a good spaghetti sauce, maybe. Uh, this is a combination of three previous spaghetti sauce recipes that we've done here on Smoky Goodness. Anyway, I'm having difficulty speaking today. Ingredients, as always, will be introduced as they come into play. Stick around. And finally, we begin. Don't know if you can tell or not, but we've got the Grilla Q right in the middle, just a little bit uh, closer to the indirect side. Shut up, neighbors. We're gonna sear off to begin with. Three, one third pound bison burgers. First, also, I have a partially frozen one third pound elk burger. That's going on. Partially frozen, it doesn't matter. You'll see why in a minute. I'm just gonna hit the bison with a little bit of black pepper. Excuse me, rainbow pepper. Maybe the elk too, what the heck. And after only about two minutes, flip these over. I want a really good char on these. Gotta have some smoke char flavor on your meat component. Your spaghetti sauce, right? We'll let that go for a couple more minutes. Noisy neighbors again. All right, a couple more minutes have passed. I'm gonna move these off very far away from the fire. Extremely indirect. These don't need to be cooked all the way through right now. As a matter of fact, I'd like them a little bit under undercooked as we proceed through this. Even that, which is still frozen in the middle. That is okay. And over the fire. Cast iron pan, a little bit of unsalted butter, and a little bit of coconut oil, which is hard as a rock. Come on, coconut oil, it's springtime. You can, uh, you can thaw out any old time now. Is there anything better than butter sauteed baby bella mushrooms? I think not. Can we make them better with the shallots I just cut up? Saute those along with the mushrooms. This is just step one of the veggie process. I've got other veggies that A, might burn if I tried this now, and B, uh, will lose their crispiness <laughs> if I try to saute them now. Matter of fact, the bell peppers are going to go straight into the sauce without uh, any kind of saute procedure or anything like that. I'm just going to go for it. All right, we'll be right back. There you go, that didn't take too long, did it? I'll tell you what, it smells amazing out here right now. All right, we're gonna pull that off. Let's step over to the grill dome and put together a sauce. And as you can see, the grill dome is running at a very low temperature. I'm actually gonna try and get it down below where it is right now. Let's get going with this. Trusty graniteware. My go-to cooking vessel for sauces. Start off with the uh, mushroom and shallots that I just sauteed moments ago. They're going in. <laughs> they smell great. Beyond great. Perfect component for a good spaghetti sauce. Maybe an average spaghetti sauce. Next, the bison burgers, the bison patties. Lay them in there. These are Nebraska bison bison patties. And this is a grande premium meat elk patty, which is probably, well, no, it's probably very, very rare in the middle. All right, we're just gonna bust these up a little bit. Want them chunky. And 
can see why I didn't want to cook them all the way through. They're going to simmer in the sauce for at least two hours. We may go a little longer with that. Oh yeah. If you thought it smelled good before. <laughs> Look at all that. It just smells amazingly good now. Bison and elk and spaghetti sauce? Are you kidding me? All right, we're gonna start off with 12 ounces of crushed tomatoes, followed by 12 ounces of tomato paste. All of it goes in, too. Give that a stir, get everything incorporated. But this is uh, nowhere near everything yet. Wow. A secret weapon. Dorothy Lynch. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I'm going to go with about a third of a cup to begin with. Preliminarily, that's what I'm uh, shooting for, but I think I'm probably going to be adding more later. It's just too good. Some of you may be asking, is Dorothy Lynch paying me for all these uh, endorsements that I've been giving them lately? Short answer is no, they're not. They're probably not even aware that I've been doing this. It's just a great product that you gotta have. Here's another secret ingredient. We've got a ginger garlic paste. There's about a tablespoon of that preliminarily. We've done this before. Really brightens up the sauce. And another secret ingredient. This isn't so secret. Everybody knows about Rome is burning from Tango Spice. Shut up, motorcycle. We go about three teaspoons to begin with, preliminarily. I may be adding more because in my mind, this eliminates the need to add other aromatics, you know, basil, oregano parsley, things like that, because uh, <laughs> it's Tango Spice. Rome is burning. Give all that a good mix. Oh yeah. Okay, really quickly, I'm going in with just a little bit of salt. Himalayan pink salt here. Not a lot. You don't want to start off too salty, of course because if it's too salty, you, uh, you're gonna have to dilute it, dilute the sauce to uh, reduce the salty taste, and I'm not willing to do that today. Okay, let's move on. Let's crack on. You didn't think I was gonna make a spaghetti sauce without uh, bell peppers, did you? Why, that would be ludicrous. Remember this thing? Of course you do, the Vidalia Chop Wizard. This is the part of the Pix Mission where uh, we save a whole lot of time. Bang. There we go. Look at that, huh? Great time saver. And we're going to dump all of these right into the sauce. Like I mentioned, I wanted these to kind of stay crunchy, crispy. I wanted them to retain their crunchiness, is what I'm trying to say. So therefore, I did not saute them along with everything else. Mix it all up. Oh, man. As this uh, begins to heat up, all the flavors kind of blend together, I'll come out and check it. See how we're doing. If it needs garlic, I'll add it. If it needs salt, I'll add it. If it needs pepper, I'll add it right now. 
because uh, it needs a little pepper. really taste the ginger, that ginger paste, ginger garlic paste. I may not have to add any more garlic. There we go. Right, we're about two and a half hours into this and we're hungry. We can't wait. I think it's time. So we're gonna get this in. The pasta's already started. Everything is coming together perfectly. Let's do this. Woohoo! Sorry, I don't have one of those fancy cheese graters like Phil has. Just gonna do it the old fashioned way. This is Parmigiano Reggiano. There it is, American Western spaghetti. And how does it taste there, Mr. Smoky Goodness Jr.? already had two pieces. You like it? I guess I'll try it too. Oh yeah. Cheers. I do too. Stuff's good. Uh, the Dorothy Lynch shines through and amazingly enough the uh, ginger garlic paste really works wonders for this. The peppers did stay crunchy just like I wanted. Everything works perfectly. You're gonna love this. Give it a try. That is, give it a try if you can find Dorothy Lynch in your area. If you can't, um, I'll post a link down in the bucket. Maybe you can order it online, or maybe you can get in touch with one of your favorite uh, barbecue guys on YouTube and ask him to send you a bottle or two. You never know. Mm -hmm.